Let's say you are learning square root in your algebra class. Then there's one section that you have to know how to rationalize the denominator. And I think a bigger question is, why do we even want to do that, right? So today, I would like to address that. And first, let me just put down perhaps the most famous square root number. And in my opinion, that will be square root of 2. And I'll tell you, this right here is approximately 1.414. 1, 4, no, it's actually 2, 1 after that. It's not my fault, okay? This right here is irrational, meaning there's no pattern and the numbers does not repeat and they don't end. Alright? It's irrational. So I'll say this is the most famous one. Because if you have, let's say, square root of 9, this is just equal to 3. 3 times 3 is 9, yeah? Okay, let's see. You're encountering this question. 1 over square root of 2. And then you will be asked to rationalize the denominator in your algebra class. Mm, but why though? Well, have a look. If I want to figure out how big this is in terms of decimal, then maybe we can use this, right? So we can say this right here should be approximately 1 over 1 1.41421. And keep in mind, we still have a lot more digits to go. I'm just not writing them down, right? Infinity, many. Okay, then what do we do next, though? If I want to figure out how big this is, it looks like we have to do 1 divided by that. And let's just run through the long division. We can handle that, right? Put the top number inside, and then the bottom number on the outside. 1.41421. And in fact, so on but it's not possible. So just leave it like that. Now, how do we do long division when the outside is decimal? Well, we have to see, move it once, twice, three times, four times, and then five times. So that means what? The inside is one point right here, right? And then we will just have to put five zeros because you also have to move the decimal point five times to the right. And now you're looking at this, and this is what? 100,000. This goes into 100,000 uh, zero times. And then you start put, put a decimal point here. Okay. And then this goes into this how many times? Well, I should put zero down here. But how many times? Can you do that in your head? Six, seven. The answer is seven. So I'll put that down. Seven. Seven times that. Oh my God. I can do it, but I don't want to do it. So, sad face. Don't worry though, I have a better way. In fact, sometimes if you do algebra, then you can make a lot of things go faster, right, in terms of computation. So, not the best, not the best. And suppose we rationalize the denominator. To do so, we multiply the top and bottom by the same thing, square root of two. Because this right here will be equal to on the bottom, we have square root of 2 times square root of 2, and that's just equal to 2. See? No more square roots on the bottom, and this right here is a rational number. I know there's a trade-off because the top is going to be 1 times square root of 2, but this trade-off is so much better. We prefer to have rational number on the bottom, because now we know this is approximately that, so we have 1.41421, and if we divide this by 2, can we do this easily? Yes. Some of you guys can even do this in your head. Let me help you a little bit. Erase the decimal point a little bit. Look at this as $141,421 and divide into 2. Ah, when we talk about money, it's easier, right? And we get approximately 707105. Well, this is a decimal point here for the last digit. Yeah, just like that. But of course, it was not $141,421. It's $1.41. So you maintain the decimal right here. So there you have it. It's like that. If you use this approach, the division is so much easier. So it's about doing the algebra first. And that is the rationalized denominator to make the next step easier.